Thanks for tuning in to the Android Virus and Sean Show. Uh, and for the second time, we are blessed and honored to have the fever on, Coco and Toit. What's up, guys? Hey, how are you doing? How are you? We're wonderful here. Just uh, waiting, it, waiting for it to warm up here in lovely New Mexico. Oh, it's I mean, cold. It's, it's been cold. Really? Yes. It's happened right, right here. And today was so ugly cold. Berlin, but it was, uh, it was a really beautiful day today. Yeah, so you guys are in Berlin right now, so we're talking to you while you guys are in Germany, which is fucking weird. Hello. Yes, the wonders of techno- modern technology. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I hear artifacts. <laughs> <laughs> artifacts. So you guys, we, we ran into you, uh, what, last October-ish? Yes. Yep. And you guys were in the middle of your tour here in the U.S., and... It has a lot happened between now and then, other than your guys' new release? Yeah, we played, you know, we played a lot of shows here. And um, I think we developed quite a little bit uh, musically, too. No? Yeah, because, we got back and we started working on that. Yeah, we started started working on the, on the record. And um, it... it it, it turned out really well. Like we were very happy with it. Also, sound-wise, really happy with it because um, it's very heavy, but it's also very pop. Yeah, and I like that. It's so uh, it's yeah, it's heavy, heavy, heavy pop music. I, I, I yeah, you guys had um um linked me to a, a file, and we we listened. Sean listened to the album, and so did I. Oh yeah, Dirty Hot. Is, is the new six track album and it's a bit darker than the last one, which I like, by the way, you know, I, I don't like bands who kind of, uh, recycle their old shit. You know, it's, it's, it's got a different vibe than the last one, but it's kind of still has your guys' touch on it. So what, why did you guys go a bit darker on this one? Who pissed you off? Oh, we ev- pissed each other off. We pissed each other off. And besides that, every, <laughs> every, everything and everybody. <laughs> we, we just had um, said like one or two songs, and they, they turned even darker than expected. Like "Love Me Away" was, you know, obviously a dark song, but it was also like a slightly darkish love song. But we didn't expect it to come out this heavy and compact. And so we just, the, the darkness in the songs opened up to us and we, we decided to take it and, and to go all the way with it and, and celebrate it. Yeah. Instead of like reducing it and making things more mainstream rock and roll, but we were like, fuck, let's go with it. Let's put like drones on this and let's put like, let's play like warped, uh, what's this called? The glockenspiel? Xylophone. Uh, warped xylophone <laughs> on top of it. Really go go all out, you know, and have like shotgun blasts and machine yeah, guns. We shit. played a lot more with sounds this time. I I thought it was I thought it was awesome, guys. I really liked it. Thank you. Thank we, you. <clears throat> and and little little do you know or you may not know, um, we your your last uh, album, um, my wife constantly listens to in the car. Oh, oh that's cool. cool. And. Uh, the kids constantly listen to it as well, and wow, so that's better. That's beautiful. Yeah, so it's like it, it's like you know your your music has slowly became, and not just for me. I'm sure for a lot of other people out there, kind of the soundtrack to their life. You know, when they go up and pick their kids from school or drive to the grocery store, and it's you know. So what you guys create, you know, people are listening to, and it just kind of forms their mood and whatnot. And it's oh, that's, that's me beautiful. Too. That's so good to hear. You know, you make an album and. You don't know if people listen to it. Yeah, you don't know how they receive it. Even if they have your CD, you know, it might just be sitting there and they listen, they don't listen to it or they do listen to it, you know. I can sing along to all your songs from the album. Oh, that's great. (laughs) So. (laughs) Just even I can do that, to be honest with you. Oh. Speaking of singing, Toy, you 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 pick up a, a couple a couple more of the I guess a little bit more of the duties on this album. We we hear a little yeah. bit more of your singing voice. Yeah, isn't that yeah. great? I like to sing, especially yes. as it's, it's kind of like for me, um, it's a bit of a luxury because I'm I'm not a singer and I I just sing. You know, I don't I don't try very hard because there's no place I could take that. So. 
I just kind of sing. Like you would sing, you know, to a child that you you have to sing to sleep or something, you know, where it doesn't right. matter. So. It, it's, I'm not a singer either. No, you are a singer. I'm not a singer. But it's fun. I really I like it. I think it works for the tracks where we did that. And I think our our voices gel really well together too because we have the same range. Only like her sounds a lot better than mine, but we have kind of the same range. Well, mine is like an octave oct- high. Yeah, hers is an octave higher, mine is an octave lower. So whatever. What is it called? The sweet zone. The sweet zone. We have the, <laughs> we have the same sweet zone, just like <laughs> one octave apart, obviously. Yeah, the sweet zone. That's what Sean calls his butthole. Is the sweet zone. I know. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's, <laughs> But I, I, you know, it, it's it's one of those things where, like you said, it's your voice. It, you're not trying to sound like something. You know, you got people who like sing in the metal, like you know, like the metal growl. You sing clean, but it's your voice. You're not yeah. trying to sing like a uh like every other like late ninety mid to late nineties band like a Pearl Jam wannabe type yeah. of thing. I always I always like the screamers, but I feel like with some people it's very organic. I can't even imagine them not screaming, but I all I, I was also very moved by um by people that really can sing and really have a shit voice and and managed to create some beautiful tunes with like really sexy vocals, you know, yeah. like the the whole like Lou Reed, Frank Black the, these people, I mean, I wouldn't try to emulate any of those. My voice sounds all different anyway. But um, I always liked that that they sang effortlessly, or or you know, um, Ian Curtis, the Joy Division guy. Yeah. Um, he he always sang very effortlessly, and you know, like he didn't care. And I kind of like that because it's the way I feel, you know. You don't come off the competition. Well, you know? it's keeping it real. Yeah, it is, and that's that's what I like about you guys. I mean, you guys are real live people. <laughs> you know, yeah. um, when we when we do our show, um, we've conducted several interviews, um, you know, with other bands and independent artists since we've talked to you last. And what I'm finding, just going along, and I'm pretty sure Sean is into agreement with this, is is we are respecting independent artists so much more. And I don't care if it's movies. Um, or music, you know, directors, actors, whatever. But we are respecting them so much more because there's a love for their art and they're just not putting it out there just to sell. So obviously money does come into a play, right? We all got to make money to live and eat and do our thing. But yeah. your, your art is what's, it, it's the forefront. You know, it's not a money driven thing, which I, which I'm finding fucking phenomenal with all the people that we are coming across these days, you know? Yeah. Yeah. It's all these yeah. I mean, it's like breathing to them. It's like a bodily function. You just create shit. It just comes to you and you, you just do it. And you, you gotta know. get it out. And if you, <laughs> if it doesn't, if it doesn't, you know, send you straight to the poor house, then that's great. You know, it's the same thing with the drink. It works. You know? It's a struggle. But... There's a, there's a lot of bigger bands that get in debt because they tour, you know, even bands like of like phenomenal range. Um, Guns and Roses had to tour Use Your Illusion for two years because after one year they were tired. But, you know, their manager said, guys, now you're starting to make money. We haven't made any money. And they've been like, well, fuck, we've been on the road for a year and you're telling us we didn't make any money. Well, you know, they had like three stages and 140 people and hotels. <laughs> Videos and with dolphins in it and shit. Cool. Bill and drug dealers and everything. And they needed to be financed. Yeah. And that's it's an expensive uh, adventure to tour, and um, you know we are, we're at a point where we break even, and that's that's kind of cool. Good. And it only works because we do this literally stripped down um, in in every sense of the word. You know, we do this on the shoestring. It's part of the fun it um, is. of doing that. We also have a lot of great friends and a lot of talented yeah. friends who help us, who help us out, who support us, who put us up, who cook for us in the middle of the night. I mean, without. Without that network and those people really being so brotherly and sisterly towards each other, um, that that couldn't work. And that for me is also a model for society. You know, I'm not like a big political guy. I don't I don't care. But you know, if if you can find that common ground that we find in rock and roll with other people that live that uh, the way we like to live that, I mean that that looks 
to me like the, the utopia of like you know a new society because that that scene is really wonderful and that and everybody who's doing shows and putting up concerts you know they should keep that in mind that that that's a type of youth culture um that's that's not for sale and that, that needs to be preserved you know wow what a fascinating concept people taking care of each other <laughs> it's an outrageous <laughs> statement <laughs> you know like Concept. I mean, it's simple and primitive. Exactly. <laughs> well, I'm being, yeah, I'm being a smartass, and the reason why I say that is I have the exact same conversation. Um, we we interviewed uh, who was it, Kill Mama, a couple weeks ago. Yeah, and I um, heard them. they're really good. I like them. Yeah, we checked them out. They're good. Very talented. Very musical. Yes, very good. Very good people. And I I had uh, I'd fed them what a couple. Of, they were here two days ago, and they came by, and you know they they were. They stopped in Albuquerque to play a show and literally went to Arizona that night. They drove all night, but they stopped by my house. I fed them and it, it was, I was telling Sean, it's like, what we don't, what we do is we don't do for the money. What we do is, and, and in essence, you know, we're, we're independent radio guys and we don't, yeah. we don't do it for money. We do it because we want to support the genre. We want to support the artists out there. And again, like I said, movies, music, whatever the case may be. But like you said, like a network of people taking care of each other and lifting each other up for their love of the art. You know, I love music and that's what I love. And I don't and I'm not I like metal. Yeah, that's that's my thing. But I mean, <clears throat> I love everything. I love if it if it the music makes you feel something inside, then it's for you. And there's some there's some music that doesn't make me feel into something inside. So I don't listen to it. Doesn't mean that it sucks because yeah. you have to be talented to be a musician. It just doesn't do anything for me. And that's fine. Yeah. But yeah. at, at the same time, you know, like you said, you just have to th just lift each other up, carry, you know, carry each other along. And, that, and that's what that's exact. You hit the nail on the head there. You got it. You got to do that. And it's not something that goes without saying, especially here in Germany. It's not so. It's very different here. People aren't as supportive. It's very, it's very different. There's a lot of competition and people tend to be assholes sometimes. But I, I want to instill that spirit that we got to know when we toured the U.S. and we played shows there on multiple occasions. I want to instill that here in Germany. You know, we played with a band from Leipzig recently, and um, uh, they were they were here in Berlin, and they were like six people or so. Mm -hmm. And, of course, we put them up. You know, for us, they went with that thing. We were like, do you have a place to sleep? You know, you can come and they were super crash. surprised. And they were super surprised because, obviously, that doesn't happen to them, that, you know, a band that they don't know, that they've never met, just says, like, well, you know, come to our house and, and sleep there. But I think that should be the rule and not the exception, you know. But, um yeah, yeah totally agree. That's, I think it's important. And it's it's funny we um we always feel that like Sean and I went went to their show the other night to Kill Mama Show and we just you know you know bought merchandise and just helped them out you know what I mean and you know had had they drank I would have just fed them a ton of alcohol but they don't drink so <laughs> <laughs> no but you know um you know just just support them you know just and that's all you can do for artists that like I said that are good and humble you know if somebody's an asshole I'm just like okay you're an asshole I'll go watch your show but I'm not gonna you know kind of hang out with you and befriend you but and and you're gonna get that everywhere but um going back to to your tour you guys are gonna get ready to start your second leg here uh, of coming through the U.S. right yeah, yes. we're doing it again. <laughs> <laughs> Do you guys have official an official name for the tour? Dirty Hot. Dirty Hot. There you go. So wh where are you guys starting off at? We start in L.A. Ooh. Um, we're kind of doing the same tour we did last year, just the other way around. We do it the other way around. We play some places that we haven't played at before. Don't ask me what those are. Um, <laughs> we're still we're still booking some we're, shows. Yeah, we're still booking some shows. <laughs> And um, uh, we start in LA, we go down to San Diego, then we go up through Phoenix. Uh, we go through Arizona, then we're gonna come visit you guys. Yeah, Yay. hopefully that Albuquerque gig works out, but I think it will. I hope so. Fingers, I hope so. Like I said, fingers crossed. We've been, I, I talked to uh, the booker, uh, as a matter of fact, uh, the other night, and I run into him when I go to uh, some shows here in Albuquerque. And he finally explained to me, because I don't know how this whole booking thing works. All I know is I have friends that are in bands, and I really like them, and I want to get them a gig. That's all I know, right? Yeah. And so I've been I've been finding myself trying to find them gigs. So he kind of he kind of educated me a little bit, and he's a super nice guy. His name is Roman, and he's like, well, 
he's like, there's a band that is tentatively booked for the day that they want to play, but they haven't confirmed yet. So he goes, and, and he goes, and I'm getting kind of pissed off at this band because they haven't confirmed yet because there's other bands that want to. So he's trying to hopefully unlock that date, you know, and I'm sure you guys know how that all goes. You know, yeah, fingers crossed. I think I don't know if anybody knows how booking works. Yeah, <laughs> booking, booking is the science in and of itself. You know, <laughs> I mean, some I also, don't think the bookers know how booking. Works. I, I don't think anybody knows how that works. I mean, if if I our experience is like we're we're always like really surprised that there's so many shows at so many places because I don't know how they get booked. I mean, we 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 end up you know getting shows to all over the place but sometimes it's a windy road you know yeah yes it's really very confusing yeah <laughs> yes I, I i am looking forward to seeing you guys by the way either way um it, looking we are forward too. to see you guys man yeah yes. and Sean Sean <laughs> you know when you guys came here uh to New Mexico Sean lived in Texas that's and, right yeah, and Sean is now back in in what Rio Rancho, New Mexico, which is basically right next to Albuquerque. Yeah, so it's Albuquerque. Basically. <laughs> it's Albuquerque. <laughs> he Sean lives in a new sub development out in the desert where, um, well, you know, they may or may have not found human bones. So <laughs> perfect for me. That seems very typical for New Mexico. No? Yeah, like, it, looks, it sounds very very, uh, very wild westy too. You know, oh. like no. Um, <laughs> On vegetables, cook your own meth, shoot guns. You know, it's it's funny you guys say that. Yesterday, <clears throat> this is really, it, it's going to tie into this, so it's really funny. I my, my wife ran over some glass on her tire, and so her tire went flat. I took it off, loaded it into the back of my truck, and I go to, like, you know, these big, you know, like, whatever, uh, one of the big big old tires or something like that, right? And they're like, yeah, it's going to be, you know, $150 for a new tire. I'm like, fuck, you know, really for a new tire. So I know this place, uh, in New, Me- in, in Albuquerque, it's in the valley. And the valley is like the old, older part of the city. And I go down there and, uh, there's a place called Los Gills. Okay. So Los Gills tire shop. Like, yeah. Los Gills. Yeah. Los Gills tire shop. And it's in it, all Mexicans working there. Right. And where they get their tires, I do not know and I do not care. <laughs> However, <laughs> It co- it costed me forty dollars for a brand new tire, and they put it on right 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 then and there. There's no transactions for credit cards, nothing like that. It's all cash. Yeah. And as I'm getting a new tire, this guy, uh, he has you know tattoos all up his arms. He looked like maybe in his late twenties, early thirties, but he's just walking around with a gun on his holster, <laughs> on his hip, a fully exposed a leather holster with this, and he literally had a revolver gun, just walking around getting his tires fixed too. And I'm like. It, it doesn't. It didn't affect me, but I looked at it from the point of view, like say if you guys were in town, right, and you guys had a, needed a tire replaced, how would you guys react to something like that, especially in New Mexico? You know, oh, I don't, I don't, I don't care at all. I'm like, I'm pretty, I'm pretty calm with shit like that. And but I, it's something you don't see. But it's something here. you don't, you don't I see mean, in Germany, and you certainly don't see in Los Angeles. Yeah. Either. No, 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 not at all. But they, but they educated us in Phoenix, Arizona. Yeah, got <laughs> the lowdown because I was when we were in. Whoops, are you still? Are you still, We're here. Yeah. yeah. Uh, my computer just went funny. Um, when we were in Texas, they had signs in the bars like "No guns allowed," and that kind of freaked me out. I asked them if it was a joke. <laughs> I said, "Is this a joke?" And they said, "No, they're required to do that." It was like, yeah, drop your drop your guns at. <laughs> and I'll give them to the bartender and you'll get them back when you leave. No, but they educated us in Arizona is that like, you know, uh, people with guns are polite people. Yeah. And, and it kind of made sense to me too, because if you have a gun, you got to be polite because you don't want to have to shoot somebody, well, you, you don't know, want them to shoot you. or you don't want to get shot over a stupid argument. So if you, if you, you know, <laughs> take out your gun, you better have a damn good reason to do that. It's, it, it's so involved. Petty clashes. It's so fascinating to me. I have a Walmart that that literally is I can walk there in ten to fifteen minutes from my house. And they have signs on the door before you go in, you know, no firearms allowed on the premises. However, you can go to the sporting goods section and buy a semi automatic rifle. Yeah. For, you know, four hundred bucks, five hundred bucks. But it's 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 amazing to me that you can do that, but you can't take your loaded gun 
into Walmart. And you cannot take your bullets back either for for yeah. exchange if you buy the wrong size of bullet. They're like, nope, once you leave, that's it. Can't bring the bullets back in. It's very, very, like you said, southwesterny weird. Yeah. It's a typical uh, schizophrenia. I mean, people in the <laughs> yeah. will never understand that anyway. And um, I, the whole idea of the right to bear arms seems to be kind of against social contract because, you know, the whole idea of like a democracy and a society is you, you pass that right off to a government agency. In other words, if somebody uh, destroys something of yours, you don't go destroy something of theirs. That's like a tribal thing. That's like free <laughs> society. But you, you know, you get the police and then, you know, the guy gets sent to court and then he goes to prison or not, you know, and this whole, I mean, I think you can't have your cake and eat it. You can't say like, we live like, you know, in a, in a democracy with like government agencies. But then again, we have the right to bear arms, you know, that seems, that seems a little bit. Um, schizophrenic, here, but maybe just from, from like a German standpoint. I'm a hypocrite when it comes to guns. I think they're idiotic and they should be outlawed, but I like to shoot on the other hand. <laughs> I love, I love well, shooting. Well, if you guys, if you guys come out here, maybe I'll take you shooting. <laughs> a shooting we met in a shooting club. The first time we met. You guys met, okay, wow. let's, I've never ta- I've never, and this is one of the questions I was kicking myself for asking you guys. How did you two meet? Shooting club. Well, the first time, and then we didn't. Like, we met. We, we met later. To but each the, other, yeah. and then we both like showed up for the first three days, and I got kind of bored with the shooting club, so I started. Yeah, going. me too. And she didn't. I was in a different group than her, and I didn't see her anymore, I know, so I, I didn't go anymore. Again. The problem was we we were we were so uh, intrigued and intimidated by each other's allure that we that neither of us really try to, you know, make a move on the other person. And that's... Well, I tried to talk to Toit, but Toit ignored me. Yeah. So, and then we met actually, uh, what was it? Two years, three years later? Yeah, three Three, years later. Three years later, again. And I had, uh, he was at my apartment and I had done some modeling for, uh, I don't know. And then I had this like big picture. I didn't know what to do with it. They gave me this like huge print out of myself from that, that was like from, like, that, from time that time that we had I had met. blonde hair back then, then. Only then I realized. And she then was I, I had dark hair, and he saw a picture, and he said, "Were you in the shooting club like three years ago?" And I said, "Yeah, but only for like three days." And I was like, "You are not that guy. Are you kidding?" Yeah, because he, <laughs> was, he was blonde, and I was bald. I had I was a skinhead back then. I had like a you shaved not head. A skin. Well, I wasn't a skinhead in in a you know political sense, but you know I had a shaved head. And, so I looked, I looked very different, but yeah, you know, we got a second chance, and so that's this awesome. But could evolve, so that's pretty cool. And you guys, yeah. in, 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 in typical like maybe hopefully love fashion, you guys just had two hour long conversations about your life and it just connected that way. Uh, we hated each other. Uh, we didn't like each other very much. To be honest, he was a to be, to be honest with you, we 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 still don't like each other very much. You know, <laughs> fashion are very powerful forces. It's know? very close to hate. Yeah. Well, I, I always told like I always told my wife like there's how can I really know how much I love you until I can really know how much I hate you. Yeah, yeah. I completely agree. And right? you know, a lot of my old buddies they're like, oh, you know, we broke up after ten years of being together because we were like brothers and sisters, or we were like best friends. You know, that kind of shit is never going to happen to us. <laughs> we'll never be brother and sister or our best friends. We will know? never be best friends. Wow. Yeah. See, my that's funny. I, I've been with my, well, you guys met Rachel. I've been with Rachel, what since ninety eight, and um, we're buddies. Like we're 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 buddies. You know, we take care of each other. But we were friends before we met. You know, um, and we. It's a long story. She was dating one of my friends, and she was fucking a lot of other people, and he was fucking a lot of other people, and uh, she decided one day that she wanted to fuck me. So she did, and uh, ever since then, uh, there, must have, there must have been quite a fuck, you know. Just, yeah, just at about your the same. Yeah. <laughs> and the rapport you two guys have. Yeah, it was great, and and we we're still together. It, it's awesome. We're both short Hispanic people, so it works out. Oh, you're perfect. Your your family is perfect. Beautiful family. <laughs> beautiful kids. Beautiful setup. Beautiful dog. Beautiful lifestyle. Mm. I mean, we talked, we talked about that recently, you know, I'm, I'm a big fan of family life we're, 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 we will be working on that too. There you go. I, I will. And my sons, for hey, some reason, hey, they could, that my sons could live oh, in Germany. Yeah. You know, we're not, 
You're not going to be barren, you know? Nice. <laughs> <laughs> Well, my son's for some reason came out with blue eyes, so I don't I don't know how that worked out. But <laughs> uh, side project by your wife, baby? Yeah, possible. <laughs> <laughs> now, now, Coco, you ended up in Germany. Is, is yeah. so? Did you go out there to model, or how did that work out? No, well, we met in L.A. Oh. and then told, yeah, he was in L.A. getting his Ph.D. Wait, and wait. Let's take a step back here. Let's take a <laughs> complete step back here. You were getting your PhD, Toy? Yeah. Yeah. It, is it complete? Is it? Yeah. What, yeah. what do you have a PhD in? Literature. What the fuck? Yeah. <laughs> I love literature. Dr. Deza. <laughs> yeah. I love, I love literature. That's what I call him when I'm mad at him. Dr. Deza. <laughs> Yeah, I, lo- I love literature. I I was at you know a university in the U.S. for an exchange program, and I did really well because there was nothing fucking else to do. And I I got so used to like drinking and partying until six in the morning, and all of a sudden I'm in horseshit Connecticut, and um, all the bars close at like one o'clock. Last call at twelve thirty. So even going out and drinking every night, I was still, you know. I was still awake. You, you just could not get so hammered that you'd be so reduced that you well, wouldn't be able to are, work. Well, the bars usually close around two in the US. Yeah, but in Connecticut, there and the, in, during the week, it was impossible to like drink all night. So I, I turned, I turned out to be just like super student, and they were like, "Well, you should, you know, go to Yale or to Harvard or some place, you know, and really, uh, you know, embark uh, on a, uh, an academic career." And I said, "Well, you know, if I if I get a PhD, there better be fucking palm trees." And so I ended up applying for like two schools in California and. And um, yeah, it did work out with UCLA, and that's where I went. And it was a, it was a great ride. And you know, I met Coco, and I had a I great time studying. there. I was getting my bachelor's. Degree. And and it was it, it all it all worked out. You know, that's awesome. So and I'm a filmmaker and a rock and roll musician. So much <laughs> like you know, getting your PhD in literature. So you're you're a fil- you're are, are, so you're a filmmaker now, or what? What are you what are you doing regarding that? He does TV. I do. I do different things. I do like music documentaries. I do. I do TV. I'm. I'm currently doing like a really interesting project of like 15 people out in the woods all by themselves for a year. It's a daily show, you know, and they need to like eke out an existence. They don't have water. They don't have uh, electricity. Now they do. You know, they they create that. They create their own society, and it's really. It's really interesting. It's really fun. So, reality show. So, what are you, are you producing, filming, directing it? How does what, what is your involvement with that? Well, you know, I'm I'm producing it. I'm responsible for the lineup. I'm responsible for uh, the shape of the show. I'm responsible for you know um, the editing process for like this the single episodes and also putting everything together and you know directing the direction and finding that that thread that goes to an episode because we want to you know we want to make like great TV. We don't just want to have like three minute little shit bits. Lovely. Is it, is it is it bull like okay so the US is known for like bullshit reality shows right like mm-hmm. like you know like they have these survival shows where yeah, yeah. the guys are like oh i'm going to sleep in this snow cave tonight and then you know uh then the camera pans to the stars moving really really fast and then the camera packs pans back down to the snow cave and then it's the morning and he crawls out of the snow cave with beautiful hair and fresh clothes Right. Yeah, not in our show. Not in our show. Oh, good. Mm. good. We're keeping it real. We don't. We, you know, we don't get involved. We don't like go in there and manipulate shit. We just let them do whatever they're doing, and and we film it and we we turn it into like good drama. So Doc- truly documenting reality. Yeah, more or less. You know, I if you have if you have like a hundred cameras, then it's always a question how real is reality. But I think at some point people forget about the one hundred cameras and just live their life, you know, because it's not a specific situation where you point a camera in their face, but it, they live there and they live there for a year. So I don't think they're concerned about the cameras. Yeah, you guys don't have cameramen walking around either, right? They're yeah. installed. Yeah, they're installed. That's you awesome. Can them, but they're installed. Yeah, it's, it's a great project and it's you know it enables us to do um, the all music. this the music. You know, we're also going to produce an, another record, believe it or not, while we're on tour. Ooh. Yeah, in New York. Yeah, we, we made the acquaintance of like a wonderful mm. producer in New York that has 
worked with a lot of people that we uh, that we have a, a lot of regard like. for. Yeah. yeah, like you know, he worked with. Uh, I, I'm not name dropping, but he worked like with you know Keith Richards on Wood, Link Ray, you know, like oh, awesome. old school rock and rollers. And he's a great musician, he's a great bass player, and a, a great producer who produces like very organic and dense. Yeah. Sounding, right? So you guys are legitimately going into a studio. Well, we we only have a couple of days. We only have, have like a short time. We're gonna. Have... So what we're going to do is we're going to try to record as much as we can before we get there, and then we, we're going to produce some vocals there, and we're going to work with. Uh, we're going to have a live drummer. We're going to have a live time. drummer. We, we're still going to have our electronic drums, but we'll have an, a live drummer playing to that, which, oh, is, nice. which will be interesting. Yeah. And it's while while this record is synthesizer laden and this is very full of electric. quirky, cool noises and very poppy. The next record will truly be uh, stripped down in a way that it it will be very organic. You mm. know, I mean, we'll we'll have a couple of sonic surprises. We'll have a couple of bits and pieces that you haven't heard on the other records. We'll still have synthesizer. It's not and like- we might you know we might still use like synthesizer here and there, but it, it will be a very organic very heavy um blues rock uh record very cool we like yeah. the blues oh yeah yeah us too we do too we hide it really funny too the songs it, on this album are all pretty much blues yeah songs. they're all like blues but even we had a, we had a, a friend of ours as a bassist and he played some extra bass and he after listening to the song as like princess pie in that case he listened to it like five times he was like Oh my god, it's a blues song. And I'm like, yeah, you know, it's a twelve bar it's a twelve bar blues. And he's like, Oh my god, you know, why, why did I have to play that five times to hear it? <laughs> like that's what that's what's so fucking cool about you guys and, and your music. I mean you hear something new. It's not just some, you know, canned, you know, bullshit you know, one, two, three thing, there's layers of shit in there and you hear it. Like if you listen to, if anybody is a fan of the fever or if anybody is just listening to your, your shit over and over and over again, like I have, um, you hear it, you hear new things. I know. know. I discover new shit there all the time, although we put it in, you know, and even (laughs) I'm like, Oh, this is interesting. It's actually cool. (laughs) Now go hard for people though to, uh, to put a genre on us. I mean, I I don't. There's none. Uh, yeah, right. Yeah. I mean, people ask me what kind of music do you play, and I just tell them to listen to it. I don't know. We just. But I'm getting it. I'm getting closer to my goal. You know, when I was young, I was said I want to have a band that's like Motorhead and Duran Duran. You know, <laughs> it's like heavy and balls out rocking and like dirty and gritty, but also like poppy and lush and with like you know big choruses you know they're all like dramatic and 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 that's that's kind of where we're like where we're like getting at and i'm I'm very happy about that development we got we uh my wife got her bucket list uh she wanted to see lemmy and motorhead play at least once and they came through new mexico so we got to see them and she got all wet in her panties. And why does Lemmy do that to women? I don't get it. He's like, I don't know. He does that to me, to be honest. I get <laughs> in my panties, man. <laughs> it's just well, his we energy. We him up in our bathroom, a big poster of his face. Oh, of Lemmy? <laughs> yeah. And Gaga was like, oh, no, that's not going up there. Not unless he's taking the warts off. No, that's not what he said. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Like, why doesn't he cut those off? See, in my, in, in my little. I love the warts. The warts are great. <laughs> There's face nipples. You know? <laughs> There's face nipples. I, I, it's funny in my in my little recording area where 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 we're you know kind of broadcasting from. I have a poster of um uh, a 1978 movie called Zombie from from Italy, and um, it, it this guy Lucio Fulci made it, and the it's just a picture of the zombie. And he has like, you know, worms coming out of his eyes and it says zombie in big red writing. And my, I have a granddaughter and she's starting to talk. She's about two and a half now. So she'll come and look in here and she'll go yuck. And then she turns around and r- runs away. Like she already knows inherently what, what's gross when she sees it. You know what I mean? Just that's how little kids are. So Coco is on the right track when she's like, no, you're not going to do this and put, I just didn't want to look at Lemmy's face every time I was on the toilet. <laughs> <laughs> now spe- speaking of movies i don't know if you know this um uh toy and coco sean and i wrote a movie oh. cool. yeah we sure did 
Are you going to get it made? Well, we just need a we, we we need a camera. We're gonna we're gonna get a camera. Maybe I can you know uh, talk to you about good cameras sometime, uh, Toy. But we need to get a camera, and uh, well, basically we're just gonna have people volunteer to help us make it. And um, it's a short movie. I could like you know co direct it. <laughs> sure. What's it about? Well, um, Sean, why don't you why don't you let them know what it's about? It's a uh, it's it's a basic run of the mill uh, slasher movie, basically. You know, uh, regarding a uh, mental patient who escapes and goes around cutting people up uh, while delivering pizzas. We we actually we did a fake tr- like a little fake trailer on it um, that we play every once in a while called the Pizza Cutter, and it kind of just. Uh, it just went from there, you know. It's it's simple to do, interesting little concept. Not going to give all the details away because some idiot might be listening and be like, oh, "I'm jumping on that," you know. But yeah, uh, no, you just all you do is like throw some like brats in there with like ridiculously large breasts. <laughs> and well, see a, I see a movie right in front of my. Pizza, I mean, yeah, I see. I oh, see yeah. a movie right in front of my mental eye. Well, yeah, we're going to be killing uh, in this movie. Um, well, we're, we're kind of, I don't want to say we're feminists, but our, obviously we're, our, our hero well, you are, maybe. I, I might be a feminist, but our hero is going to be a woman. Um, however, um, the people that he will be killing will be like, you know, really annoying stoners. Um, That's good. And uh, <laughs> who else? Like really like uh, just obese like, slobs, ob- obese slobs that are, you know, your, your typical like, uh, you know, um, complaining obese people that, you know, don't, you know, just, you know, have no right to complain because their lives are good, stuff like that. A really fat man saying he's starving, you know, stuff like that. Yeah, a, re- a really fat man complaining that he's starving and if he doesn't get any food, his di- his di- he's going to go to a diabetic coma, but in the meantime, he's 300 pounds. <laughs> I think that right. makes sense. So the ones who order the extra cheesy crust, they get, yeah. yeah. Yeah, <laughs> it's gonna be great. We we uh, have already. Yeah, we have we have hey. a lot of other you know um, small things like that written. Like uh, the Devil's Kiss is about uh, somebody unlocking secret um, secrets inside the Kama Sutra. So if you do a bunch of different sexual positions in a certain sequential order, um, you awaken a demon. <laughs> That's interesting. You know, I'm looking at. Uh the rock and roll sign you're doing there and for the first time on the picture okay is your, your sky picture and don't you think like his pointer finger looks like a penis in that picture it certainly does <laughs> it really does look like a penis not like a very large penis well it's his actual size so yeah my penis isn't very big i mean it's just average you know like so that's that actually is my penis. <laughs> That's a hell of a penile finger you got there. <laughs> well, my wife loves it. You know, she definitely loves it. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, getting back to your guys' music, um, how many dates are you guys doing in 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 the U.S. and how long are you going to go for? And you said it's identical as last time. Well, last time we did what thirty five shows. Yeah. This time. We'll do around 35, maybe a couple more, um, depending on our route. And, um, yeah. Do you, do you have any bands that you're going to hook up with along the way? Some kind of nightmare and the drama llama ding dong. Oh, awesome. yeah. yeah. Hell yeah. And, so and yeah, D- drama llama oh, ding dong, oh, Mo- Mojo okay. Surf Buddy. Yeah, we yeah. talked to, we talked to Joe yesterday. Uh, we we write a lot back and forth, thanks to the social networks. That's the only thing they're good for, actually. <laughs> yeah. To keep in contact with your beloved friends. Yeah, we got a show with them in San Diego on May 9th. On May 9th at the Till Two Club. Yeah. So if any of you guys are in San Diego on May 9th, come by. What about with some kind of nightmare? Uh, we don't have anything planned with them yet, but we are. Definitely. We have to hook up with Yeah, them. we have to cross paths. I mean, if we're going to be there for two months, 
playing 40 shows, then one of them has to be with them. Yes, absolutely. <laughs> now, my, my relationship with Some Kind of Nightmare has really taken off since I uh, interviewed you guys last. Um, and they they had rolled through Albuquerque, and they, they'd stayed the night at my house, and one night actually ended up being to two nights. And we got along immensely. Um, just fucking awesome people. And yeah. last There's time. No not to get along with them. Yeah, we loved that. Oh, yeah. And then they rolled through again and they stayed another two nights and we just ate and had fun and laughed and just good fucking people, man. Yeah, great yeah. people. Toit was right when he said Molly was the Mother Teresa of punk. Right? She is. She is. You can quote me on that anytime. She's, <laughs> she's the Mother Teresa of punk rock and roll, really. I mean, she's just, just really awesome. Yeah, good people. And then because of them, we, we got introduced to that, like I said, that band Kill Mama, which mm-hmm. who they stay out with in Florida. So if you guys are out in Florida, whatever, try to hook up with those guys too, if you can. We should do Florida at some point. It's not on our route. We oh, go, okay. Yeah, we go through Texas and then, from then we go over to like New Orleans and then we sort of cut up towards towards New York. We'll post the dates soon. So what do you, when you guys come out here, what do you guys like rent a car or how does that work out? <laughs> Last time my parents lent us theirs. <laughs> 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 and, how, and how did that work out? That worked out amazing. It, I, I, my parents are the best. They are, they support us like no one else. They're amazing. And this time, I am, we're actually taking my first car that my, like, when I was 18, I bought a car and then I came to Germany and my sister had it. And they, my parents and my sister, they wanted to sell it. And I said, no, 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 don't sell it yet. We'll take it on tour. So this time, if we're going to take uh, my first car so, and hope it's a breakdown. So when you were 18, well, that was like three years ago, right? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so the car should, the car should hold up pretty good. Yeah. I mean, I, I, I think it's fine. It's not like a big car though. It's a Nissan Sentra. Oh, okay. So it, it's, it'll be small. We're not, it, I don't yeah. know how comfortable it's yeah, going to be, be tight quarters, but, living you know, out of it'll take cars. us, it'll take us around hopefully. And no, it'll, hopefully no more hostel, staying in hostels in Santa Fe where cat, a cat can piss on your stuff. That wasn't a hostel. That was a person we were couch surfing. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> that was wow. horrible. Yeah. Oh um, my God. Did you, how did you get hooked up on somebody's couch? Well, there's that website, couch surfing. Couch surfing. I didn't know that. I'm, yeah, there's, yeah. A, there's a website for couch surfing, and um, which is basically you can stay at people's houses for free. It's it's fun. It's a cool, cool way to get to know people. It's great to meet people, and you you know you kind of return the favor, and you you know you find people that you're gelling with, and they ever come to Europe, they can crash here. We put up people here all the time. And it's it's just uh, it's very it's very cool. So there's so there you guys aren't scared of running into any serial killers. Uh yeah. No. I there was a couple places that I slept in the car. So it's like <laughs> fuck it, I'm sleeping on the couch. Fuck you guys. Yeah. yeah. And then I was like, you're not making me sleep in the car by myself. <laughs> no, it was it was more like it was more like. Um, you can sleep on the couch. I'm gonna sleep in the car, and I was like, really? Because I don't. I don't have a problem with that couch. I don't mind that the basement is a little bit dirty and there's spiders. And she's like, yeah, you sleep in there. It wasn't a little bit dirty. It was filthy. <laughs> oh, wow. <laughs> so, I mean, so couch surfing is really great. And it's, um, it's the only way that we can, that we can make this tour work. Yeah. Because if we had to pay for hotels every night, then yeah. we couldn't do it. No, so, we have a lot of friends and family though along the way too. And some, 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 sometimes we couch surf. And, uh, and I, I think it's a great thing. And men are a lot more tolerant to dirt. They gotta be because they go hunting and do all that thing. A relic of that men being their level of disgust being much higher than that of a woman. It's also like, who's taking out the garbage? Men, you know? Right, right. I take out the garbage. I'm also <laughs> taking the garbage. Be, being, being a parent, I clean up, uh, I clean up the puke, um, clean up the shit. If, the kids had like gotten sick or whatever. All of that. I cleaned it all up. She'll yeah. do it if she has to, but she'll get sick herself. 
Yeah. You know, it, it's like yeah. a, a chain reaction of puke. Whereas me, <laughs> I can, um, you know, be eating a ham sandwich and looking at, you know, um, genital infections and I'm good. You know, it's. Oh yeah, me too. I have, I, I can watch like slash term movies and eat blood pudding, you know? I don't, <laughs> <laughs> I don't mind. There you go. So you guys, we're gonna, we're gonna, uh, see you guys here, uh, hopefully, uh, in, on May 13th, I hope, in New Mexico, I think. Was that the we'll date? Be there. We'll be there. We'll be there. I hope, I hope we can work a show out, but we yeah, will definitely we'll be, be there. there. So we'll definitely. see each other. Absolutely. I, I am so looking forward to it. And is there anything you guys want to pimp or promote or anything like that right now before we let you go? Check out our new CD, Dirty Hot. It's on Bandcamp. Uh, you can uh, you can buy it on Bandcamp. You can stream it on SoundCloud. Um, check out our Facebook page. It's uh, Facebook slash thefever.music with a K, M-U-S-I-K. Uh, you'll find all the links there. And yeah. uh, Twitter, Instagram, anything like that? Uh, yeah, we uh, Instagram, we have that. That's the Fever Coco, C O C O. Uh, Twitter, we do, we have that too. It's the Fever, and all of the E's are threes. It's a, it's a little bit confusing. <laughs> <laughs> we also have a website, which is simply thefever dot d e. For Germany, you know, the German, Deutsch. the German name of yeah. Germany is Schland, Deutschland. So it's D-E, like the D and the E of Deutschland. Yeah. The fever dot D-E. So check us out if you don't know us. Um, I just uh, followed you guys on Instagram. Cool. cool. But don't follow me back. Don't worry. <laughs> <laughs> And the only reason why I say that is because my Instagram is thoroughly disgusting. So is it it private or can I follow you? It's private. You just got to, you, it comes with like a parental advisory. What it's, it's, yeah. So lots of pictures of Lemmy and his awful face on there. Well, there's, there's lots, there's either pictures of my dog, my action figures, you know, like my toys that I collect, I collect action figures, um, hairy gay men sometimes, um, and or, you know, people, surgeries, yeah. you know, stuff like that, you know, whatever. Surgeries. Good, good, yeah. uplifting shit. I just yeah. thought, uh, requested uh, that I follow you. Okay. I, let, yeah? let, do, let me, let me, let, let's see. The, you requested Android virus? You just, yeah. You. Oh, I don't have I just it. added you. Okay, well, cool. It's just because we're in Germany, it, it takes a little longer. Yeah, it was going to take a little longer because much like our last show, I wanted to get a couple of reactions from you guys. So we'll, we'll see what happens. But, you know, I, I, I usually have, a, you know, I get bodybuilder women on there, stuff like that, you know. Nice. You know, be- beautiful women like that, I guess you could say. But I, also- I made a documentary on those ones, and uh, I, I, I'm into it. I think it's great. It, and a lot of people don't realize that, you know, if you're into body modifications, that is like the oldest form of body modification right there. Absolutely. And it, it's not very healthy for you, but... Um, you have same- to be so disciplined. Yeah, it takes more discipline and it takes six bigger balls, you know, to do that sort of thing. People, than, pe- people don't know. Body modifications. Absolutely. All right, guys. Well, much love to you and um, good right luck back. on the new release. And I uh, will definitely, me and Sean will definitely be seeing you guys when you roll through. Oh, I'm excited. Yeah. And we <laughs> we'll put this up on YouTube uh, here and we'll, we'll link you all up to it and you guys could share it with your audience. Awesome interview, you guys. Thank you so much for your time. Thank, Thank you, you, guys. Mm-hmm. Bye-bye. Have a good right. one. Bye-bye.